It is so joyful to be with you all again here in Vienna. A poet came to Vienna a long time back from India. He said that walking on the streets of Vienna, the heart starts beating in a poetic rhythm and the ripples of poetry start flowing. So there have been people who have been seekers before in this place, definitely, and that they are again sort of reborn. So we are all looking forward to Sahasra Day, which is a very great thing, and that you all are here. Uh, to take up the task of receiving all the Sahajogis and looking after them. Now the atmosphere, as I said, of Vienna itself is very poetic. I'm sure Sahasrara Day will be a great experience for all of you. Poetry is like moonlight, and what the, when it falls upon any matter, it enhances the beauty and gives it a charisma. And the Language is so beautiful that it hides all the ugliness uh, as the moonlight hides all the detailed ugliness. It creates an atmosphere so meditative. This is what is Sahaja Yoga, that it makes our life, the prose into poetry, the poetry of experiences and events that take place. Like today when we were coming by plane, we three of us wanted to sit in one line and that we had two seats together and one on the sides. And uh, when the doors were about to close, we found that the third seat was vacant, nobody came. So Dr. Uh, Pyro sat and I saw the poetry lilting in his heart because he was smiling all the time. <laughs> and uh, this is how things work out. When we came down, I looked at the sky, because I know always sky gives a special welcome to me. And the sky looked like a Sahastra completely uh, like a lotus uh, with all the little, little uh, petals as if lit up into small streaks of light, uh, converging from one point. They were going down like that, just like a lotus, the shape was. And then Gregor comes in and he, he looks at me and I talk to him and he's looking out for Rustam. Rustam is standing next to me and he doesn't recognize Rustam is looking much younger. He just <laughs> So he said, Oh God, I never recognized you. And it was such a beautiful meeting of two friends, Sahaja Yogis. He was waiting and waiting for him and he never recognized. What a story! <laughs> so this is what is filled then. You come out and see such beautiful people and you see all the children standing there. You feel so much enamored and you don't know what to say. All faces look like little, little flowers to me holding my heart in their delicate petals. I didn't know how to control my tears. It was too much of joy. And they say at Sastrara one feels Nira Ananda. Nira is my name and the joy of Nira. Today I experienced it on your faces which was reflecting in my heart, just as if the love has woven such beautiful poetry, so pure. And then Gregor said that you are all going to meet me. I was very happy to know that we are all going to meet. There in the, at the outside I see an emblem of your mother and children, and I see how already the poetry has got a beautiful heading, such delicate relationships, and emitting such fantastic love and joy is something to be only felt and experienced. Now your friends will be coming from all over to meet you on Sastra Day. I hope you'll recognize them, and they will recognize you too. Just see their eyes and you will know they are your brothers and sisters anywhere in the world, because there's a glint in the eye. No, 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 there's a spark, 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 spark. spark. I'm huh? funkle, I'm I'm <laughs> And that's how you can recognize uh, the Sahasrara should meet in Vena is such a great thing for me. I remember the day when I opened the Sahasrara and I saw the birds chirping, uh, the flowers blooming, the whole nature feeling the joy of Sahasrara being opened. But the human beings, I didn't see the reflection on their faces. But today, right from the airport, when all the Sahajogis came, and then in the plane, I saw that the force of uh, Sahasrara has improved very much. Not only that, but the sensitivity of even ordinary people has improved a lot. And in the plane, everybody entered very serious. Perhaps they were coming for a very serious job to Vena with big problems, very serious. And I just 
went off to sleep in the uh, halfway, and when I got up, everybody was laughing and joking, <laughs> as if they had no problems left. And in the bus also, everybody was laughing. So now we have to realize that the surgeons have done so much, so much to channelize this Nirānand all over the world, so much. So I am very thankful to you for all that. And now we look forward to the people who are coming. We, they are coming here to enjoy the Nirānand, and we have to see to it that we give them all that is Nirānand. Nirānand means just kevalam, kevalam. Ānanda kevalam is Nirānanda. Alone. Sure, sure. The old kevalam, sure. Sheer joy. I mean, nothing but joy. It's Nirāna. And it's for delight itself. is of light, comes out of light, is the… see, the light and the joy, so much of, of light. Uh, so this is… we are all enlightened, we are all Nirmalites, <laughs> and that's how you, uh, you uh, all are joy. In everything that you see, you feel the joy pouring in. You can't understand how you see something that you see every day and there is joy. Now, for Sastrara day, I have to tell you about a little chakras that you are catching, which you should clear out before that would be a good idea, very intimate. The first thing I find is right Vishuddhi. For that, I would suggest that you all should take uh, a tea you won't get basil here, yeah? but uh, I've got something which you can put it in the tea, which you can take it, and then then have a ajwain duni. Now another thing you have to do is to put your fingers into your ears and say Allahu Akbar sixteen times. Put your head back. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah. clear out most of your <coughs> problems about Vishuddhi. Mantras are to give strength to your deities. Of course, deities are very powerful, but strength meaning the vehicle which is carrying the deity becomes stronger. As you know, this is also the mantra of Radha Krishna or Vithala, is the same for right Vishuddhi. But Allah has two things in it. First is, of course, the Vishuddhi and also the collectivity. So by the First one, you get bad colds and you get your attention diverted and, and other problems of the ear, nose, throat. And the, by the second one, uh, when it is spoiled, you say aggressive words, uh, sarcastic language, all kinds of things that breaks the uh, collectivity. So either you suffer from a bad cold so you cannot speak, and when you speak, you hurt others. <laughs> but the voice should be melodious and the language should be controlled. If we can control our t tongue, eighty percent of collectivity we will achieve. Tongue is first of all, of course, for saying things which are sweet and beautiful. Let us find out what sweet things we are going to say to people who come here not expressing our views about, I like it, I like that, I want that. But on the contrary, do you like this, would you like this, would you enjoy this? So the language should be directed towards others, uh, showing interest and concern. Another thing one should try is a physical treatment of your throat. It's very simple, I've seen, is that you push back your tongue and put your this is a physical thing. Put your chin 
here and try to push back your tongue as much as possible. Now, and hold your breath. Push back your tongue as much as you can. Kundalini will move further. First you have done Allahu Akbar, so you have bent backwards. By doing this, you see, you have allowed it to open the other way around. You will see the sides, from the sides, the Kundalini will be opened out. Another thing is that Krishna is very fond of uh, butter. But in collectivity, Krishna principle plus the principle of the Guru is mixed. When he becomes a Guru, then the collectivity starts. Principles, when principles of these two, when they get integrated, then the collectivity starts. And as a result of that, you get discretion. So to improve the discretion part, is a very simple thing we do it, is to take vibrated ghee or ghee, butter which is heated up and put it in the nose. But before that, we gargle our teeth, our uh, throat, with the salt, which represents the Guru principle. Guru, that is Guru principle. Salt. One is the Guru principle. Also, you can take little ghee uh, or a butter on top of a hot water cup, and if you drink it, that suits all your sides, because that is the Krishna is soothed by that. There's another thing called primrose oil that you get in these countries, primrose oil. A two, three drops of that, if you can take it in the water, that will also soothe your Vishuddhi. So oil is the one that helps you. In your ears, if you can put some olive oil heated up with some garlic in it, uh, heated up, one garlic piece in it, that's very good for the ears. So the oil is the one that keeps your Vishuddhi all right. Also the hair are to be oiled properly. Lot of oil should be used before, uh, say, Saturday or something, so that when you have your bath, you clear out your <coughs> oil completely. And when you get conditioners here, it's a good idea, but in India we use oil again. But you can use conditioners if you want, but make the oil, uh, hair smooth with it. And then you must do again with your own hands, nice massage. Or one Sahaja Yogi can do for another, nice massage for the head, because this is what I'm preparing you for Sahasrara. And uh, you'll be surprised that your head will be very clear, and thus you'll be prepared for this puja of Sahasrara. I would say you must order one gallon of olive oil. When all the Sahaja Yogis are coming, you should all be ready to give them a nice massage on their heads. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also on their backbone and Vishuddhi Chakra will be a good idea. We'll give them a, a better uh, sort of a feeding for Sahasrara Day. As uh, in India, the custom is if you sort of want to show the uh, friend your hosp uh, hospitable nature, then like when Sudama met Krishna, first thing he did that he got all the uh, fragrant uh, things to rub on the hands and the body of Sudama. Then he gave him a nice bath with hot water. And the, first, of course, he rubbed oil, lot of oil on his body. And then he gave him a nice bath and uh, then he gave him nice clothes to wear. And Sudama was so enamored by the love because when you touch somebody with oil, see, the Krishna Tattva acts because Krishna is the one who represents the Madhurya, the sweetness, sweetness of your character. It's a very beautiful feeling of Madhurya. You see, in little, little things they express Madhurya, like in poetry, in some relating some events, where you get a very sweet feeling about uh, the whole uh, event. Play a Hmm? Madhuri me lila bhi. Ah, lila me. Krishna ki lila jyoti, all full of madhuri. Krishna's leelas were all full of madhuri. It's like a sport, you see, it's a sport. I'll tell you how sweet she was like this. See, once uh, uh, Indra got very angry with him and he started raining very heavily. So uh, the all the people who were looking after the cowherds were called gopas and gopis, they were all getting drenched. 
And uh, so he said, don't you worry. And he lifted the Govardhan on his one finger, the whole Govardhan uh, mountain, he lifted on his one finger. And they all came under the shelter of that mountain. So then he says to the Gopas that now my finger is paining, you better support it with your sticks that you have in your hand, otherwise my finger is paining. This is the sweetness. Like uh, once he uh, ate, uh, I mean he really was a thief, a little thief, <laughs> and uh, fond of butter. So the butter of the house was kept in a uh, little uh, pot and was hanging up, kept hanging there so that no cat can reach and all that with a kind of a thing we have, a string thing to keep that pot. So they, uh, he collected all the children and took out all the um, butter and ate it and the whole face was filled with butter. So his mother came and she took one stick and she said, Now you have eaten all the butter. So she says, I never ate any. The whole thing was filled with <laughs> And these boys uh, must have put something on my mouth because they have eaten everything. <laughs> so then say that, see now, the whole day I work for your cows and when I come home you just try to trouble me like this. And then he says that, now I am your foster son, that's why you are troubling me like this. And she starts looking at him and then he puts his hand towards him, little hands, and he said, but I have kept some for you in my hand to be given, though they have eaten everything, and puts it in her mouth, so the, all her temper goes away and she, she just embraces him to his heart. And that's how the whole thing ends up into a sweet drama. When Krishna is awakened within us, we also can do all such dramas with each other and enjoy the frolics. Then we don't lose tempers, we don't get angry, uh, we uh, enjoy each other's personality very much. So to prepare for Sastra Day, first we must prepare this honey uh, for them when they arrive. And nobody is going to scold the children at all. <laughs> and the children are going to be very sweet and they are going to sit very quietly. Now let us see how big she has become. Come along, Niranjana, you come here. I want to see how big you have become. Oh, such a big girl. Now they are going to sit like big people, they are not small. Now what about the, you, Machindanath? You've gone small or big? Let's see. Will you stand up? Oh, he's become so big. Now you better sit like a big man. All right? Uh, she's small. Still, is you small? Uh, now. And you can't put that in the mouth. All right, he'll keep it down. So now sit quietly. All the children in London sit very quietly. Let us see all the children in Vienna. How do they sit? Look at her, she's sitting very quietly. Such a nice girl she is. And also Ranjanai is very sweet and Machinda Nath is the sweetest. <laughs> you have to... Uh, you have to load, load them. You see, you have to load them with dignity, load them with praises, so that they settle down. You see, just load them there, loading. Sit down, sit down now. You can't, you can't do that. You can't do, you are big. You want to take out? All right, sit down, sit down, we'll take it out. Sit down, sit down, take it out. All right. All right. <laughs> Good, nice. Now, yours is all right. Yours is nice. Yours is nice. All right. Now, see, let's see. You are feeling my brain. Let's see, all of you. See here? Hmm. Let's see. Niranjana, see, just see. You feel vibration? Good. You're feeling vibration? Yeah? Yes, see. Sure. Good. Hmm. See. Everybody's feeling it. So now, what? Well, if you have any questions, ask me. That's it. Uh, Rustam brought this for me because he said the gold is cheap there. And, this <laughs> is, and he said this is not diamond to make me wear that. So I've taken out now my watch. So you tell me if it is all right for you to ask questions. Just imagine. 
This will be in the personal archives of Mataji. This is Athena's dress. You see, she wears it in the right hand, showing the Kundalini in the, on the Vishuddhi chakra. See, for her also, Vishuddhi was very important. Now Mr. Reagan is go- going to born, so <laughs> also give all of them a bandhan. They are all planting all kinds of bombs in wrong places. <laughs> he will be caught up by boots. Only in danger is he should not become another SS. See, he's, you see, he is an actor, and after all, an actor, how far can one go? Looking out. Why do they go to the cemetery? I just don't understand. As it is, you are caught up, you are going to any cemetery. And to going to somebody who is an evil uh, influence anywhere, if you go there, then what will happen to you? You will be all caught up. God save you. <laughs> you see, most of the presidents of Russia are now, you find, are dying of this problem. And uh, same thing this fellow is up to. You see, it's a Vinasha Kalai Viparita Buddha. When you want to destroy yourself, you go to your mind only suggests you wrong things. It's very wrong to go to any cemetery whatsoever. And to this concentration camp to go itself is dangerous, you see. Or even to cemetery going to SS is very dangerous. I went to East Germany and they wanted, uh, they showed me that there was a concentration camp and all that, and I closed my eyes because. Uh, I just wanted to bless all the souls in that concentration camp so that they should not uh, be hanging somewhere uh, in a state from where they cannot take their birth. And you see what is happening to Israel today is because of uh, these concentration camp effects only and also the effect of uh, they, they went to, hmm, what do you call this, bad gurus like Mahesh Yogi importance to boots, then that life itself will be uh, weak. But this is too much to go to this SS camp because that shows such a compromise. This politics is nothing but a compromise. And then it is so mean, so filthy that tomorrow if Hitler comes in, Reagan will go and garland him just to give a balance. And she's such an action and a reaction. That you just cannot say, like some people told me that after all the Americans also went and killed the Japanese, so they are equally the killers. So under these circumstances only one can say that all these are wretched people, they have no sense of proportion at all. They compromise with evil, compromise with wrongdoers and uh, compromise at any cost just to have an election. Sometimes you start decrying democracy because it becomes a democracy. So one can say that, one could say that one should have uh, the desire and the prayers to God that, O oh God, uh, make Sahaja Yoga so successful that people enter into the Kingdom of God where there is not such filthy things. I mean, this is the politics of the gutters, I feel, the way it is. It's very, very low level. Everything is so low level. We don't need uh, anybody's uh, votes in Sahaja Yoga, our vibrations are our votes, our vi- votes. I mean, somebody is elected because he has good vibrations, that's all, just gets elected. That's what it is, the centripetal and the centrifugal force which works it out, which is so natural, not mental, so it doesn't compromise with something that is wrong. And those who are wrong, who are not up to the point, have to work it out and they can be again back, see, which is a living force. But nobody harms anyone to that extent, cannot harm to anyone to that extent that we can say that is uh, like uh, SS people. Somebody cannot become like an SS person in, uh, in such a way. Nobody can harm to that extent because this is a living force. And living force, whatever is living, can always be improved. But a plastic uh, you cannot do anything, you cannot remold it, you cannot do anything to it. It's just once you create, it is created like a monster, it will pile up into a mountain, you don't know what to do, how to dissolve it. So as if I feel that it's all such filth that this fungus-like growth has come up. This is all like funguses. So they are at the helm of affairs, these funguses, <laughs> fungi. And I really don't know what to say about them. I mean, they are that level, what to say? 
We should just dissociate with them. We are different people altogether. We are flowers. So after Sahasrara Puja, I'm going to, as you know, to America also, and I hope something will work out on the Vishuddhi there. But first, let us work out our Vishuddhi in Vienna, and we can work out the Vishuddhi of the universe. <laughs> and the other side of it, it gives you a guilt, because uh, when you speak about Germans, every German catches up here. <laughs> They are gone, finished. They are now born as Jews, <laughs> and Jews are born as Germans. So what are you feeling guilty about? <laughs> That's how the other we should be also should be all right, and our uh, sastra day will be a great success uh, if uh, we only know that Christ is with us all the time, and that our agya will not make us mental too much, but relax us from mental activity. For that a simple thing is, you leave everything at the lotus feet of your mother, finished. Uh, your thoughts and your uh, problems, uh, everything. Another miracle, I'll tell you one, recently. We have one Ian from Australia, he came uh, with some paintings, he's good at painting, and he was very unsuccessful, he could not get any job or any publicity, anything. So he came to me and he said, Mother, I don't know what to do, you just see my paintings. So I saw them, he had done very, he has very good hand, but more importance was given, given to other things than the human beings there, you see. So I told him, you have to paint human beings better in details than other things. So he got worried because he thought he has to do now the face study and all that. He was quite worried. I said, all right, you leave everything at your mother's lotus feet. I was sitting in my dining room and suddenly I find, found everybody was smiling up to the end of their <laughs> jaws. <laughs> Just after half an hour it happened that he received a telephone call that he's got a very good job. That's why Christ has said, Behold the Mother, behold the Mother, behold. Because when you look at Me, because I create Nirvichara, you become nirvichar. So you have to say, Mother, you are nirvichar. And that is how your agya can be all right. And if you can put a light in front of you and say that, your left agya will be all right also. That's how you keep your passage all right for Sahasrara Day, because maybe this time I may really put a big blast. <laughs> uh, last time we had a puja in Birmingham, and it was a tremendous experience for all of them. So the Vienna people should be prepared for the Sastra day. May God bless you. Children of the Vishuddhi would like to offer a gift to the new ashram in Vienna. I'd like to get you to present it to Gregor. Alisa. Oh, beautiful. The customs officer asked me to put a valley on it, Mother. Huh? <laughs> the customs officer asked me to put a valley on it. Really? What? Then what did you say? I said the frame cost twenty-five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> what about this one? He said it's a volume. It should be a value for this. He thought it was some painting or what? <laughs> he didn't get specifics from other people. <laughs> yeah. Coincidentally, he was speaking about Sri Krishna today. <laughs> <laughs> so, just imagine. All right, Vidya. So we should give it to him. It's beautiful. It has got these uh, uh, more punk. Peacock. peacock, peacock feathers, peacock feathers. After this puja, it worked out very well. That's nice, very much better. Now Bala is going to Montreal. Then he'll be going somewhere in uh, Ohio, that side. Uh, first she's going to Montreal and then there. I think things are working out. I will not have any program in Los Angeles, but I'll be having one in San Diego. Danny is hoping to come to Dan Danny is in New York. Is he coming? Hoping to Oh, I see. It will be a nice idea. Who got married among these fifty-four couples we had last time? Ah, good. <laughs> ah. So I'm very happy to know about it. Ah, it was real joy. And the hundred and eight mar people married, really, it was like heaven. Beautiful. Uh, 
I was told that you were asked for money when you went there twice, and I have to give an explanation for that because uh, people said that nobody gave any explanation. No, but uh, there's one uh, one one point I would like to say that the money was taken one for the presents of fifty-four marriages. You better tell them, and because you see, even if you have to give one dollar, it is fifty-four dollars. So I think they took seventy dollars. And the other money was taken for that land I was going to buy. So I mean, there was no hanky panky about it. The whole money was given to me. No, no, not from my side, but from the people who collected, because it was done for the land. You know, Gregor, we are buying for the. We have already bought it in Vaitarna, the 42 acres of land. So that's what it is. But they said that they never told us, and some people in England. But that's why I want to just tell you that that this was the reason they had to collect that time. Because it's for your children, the school is going to be for your children and not for Indian children. Six, uh, I mean, it was beautiful and whole thing was done so well, and I mean, everything went off very well. But one should not have these feelings because our attention should not be on material things. It's not a very good idea to have attention on the material things because these things spoil the joy. Of everything, I mean, nobody is making money there. You know that very well. Yes, this is how also we kill joy. These are joy killers. Or if you have to spend on someone, say some friends are coming or something, then you should be happy to do that. Instead of that, if you start counting your pennies, it is joyless. The generosity is most enjoyable thing. I think I enjoy my generosity very much, and uh, all the time I'm thinking how I can. Uh, Increase my enjoyment of generosity. War does one good thing sometimes that people get out of the materialistic attitude. Some, oh, one good thing, but other lots of bad things are there. But this is one thing I've seen when the war shakes a man. You see, he thinks, what's the value of all these things I've been fighting for? But if you get niranand, after that you don't want to have any joy from material. Uh, Gains or material things, you just do not want to have. I mean, you feel so secure with it. So you didn't ask me any other question. The trouble is, you all get thoughtless. <laughs> no question. Anything? At least ask how to perform the puja or something. <laughs> Can you explain Nirananda a little bit, Chumma? Huh? Can you talk about Nirananda? Nirananda. See, you can only describe it. You cannot explain. Where there is complete joy, then there is no happiness and unhappiness. You do not feel happiness or unhappiness. These are the qualities of the ego and super ego. Translate. <laughs> Nirananda. In Sahaja Yoga, as you grow from one to another, there are different types of anandas. Like we can say, the spirit. When you see the spirit, you get an anand called swanand. That means you feel your spirit, yourself, and you feel very happy. Then you give realization to others, you get parananda, joy of others. But when uh, uh, you get the uh, enjoyment of well-being in health. And materially all right, and everything in santosha, in complete satisfaction. Then it's Brahmanand, and like that, you start of feeling higher and higher joys within yourself, because your nerves start opening to new dimensions. So you can say that at the Krishna level, you get Krishnanand, where you get uh, the uh, sweetness, the Madhurya, and when you see uh, a Your generosity, uh, then you get Shivanand, and when uh, uh, you be with children, you get Ganeshanand, and that can be described. All those can be described, but Nirananda cannot be described because it's Mahamaya's joy. <laughs> <laughs> All these joys put together is Nirananda. So there is no place for ego and super ego at all. The complete sastrara is opened out, and nothing but the. A uh, complete rapport is established with the divine, and there is a pouring of light all the time in the head, and the light going back. That you have seen in my photo, as if the 
Sahasrara becomes like a sucking child from the uh, Universal Mother, sucking the joy inside, and uh, it is again reflecting back. It would be like the waves reach the shores, and then they are again uh, repleted, they go back, and then they form a pattern. Now the joy out of that pattern, how can you describe? The only thing about Nirānanda is that you have Mahamāyā so close and so far away. That's a speciality, complete totally. Silence then, complete silence, you don't think, just silence, you cannot put into words anymore, because the words break with the force of the ānanda, they cannot hold it. All right? <laughs> now explain <laughs> how you are feeling, you better explain now. <laughs> Uh, any other question? Beautiful question. So far, you see, at human level one feels only the pains or pressures on the nerves, but never the ānanda. But after realization only, your nerves start feeling the joy. All right? Anything more anybody has to say? Yes, can I? What did you say? Kwani. Yes. You want to know about her? That's an incarnation of one of the. Yeah. I mean, in the Chinese mythology, you find the incarnation described of Kwani. And actually, she's the one who is the Buddha, is described as Buddha. She's the one, is the aged one. Uh, because uh, Kwan Yin was born to a king, she was the daughter of a king, and she was the virgin form of the goddess, and she would not marry. So her father got very angry with her that she's not married, and he threatened her because he had arranged her his marriage, her marriage with some great king. You see, and when the Marriage to play. Uh, marriage did not take place. Father was so angry and annoyed and felt very humiliated. So he took her to a hillside and but said, threatened that I will throw you down. And actually, she was thrown down from the hillside into a valley, and he thought she must have been dead. But there was a tiger which held her and he carried her along, and then he looked after her. And when she grew very old, quite old, then she came out of her hermitage, and she started treating people, and many people got cured by her. But she was quite old, then the father recognized her, because father was sick. She went and treated the father also, and she started curing people, and that's the Kwani. Uh, if you go to Hong Kong, you can see her statue. The face is very much like mine, absolutely. But she's older looking and her uh, shoulders are bent, quite bent. But she came much before Christ. And the, uh, the Buddhist felt that people won't give her up because she was so much regarded as the Mother of Mercy. So they included her in the Buddha uh, thing. You don't need translation? Anything else? How can we be more aware of you in our daily life, in whatever we are doing, not in meditation, in whatever we are doing? See, Gregor, the Western mind is uh, and not conditioned so well for that, you must understand. Now, when I went to Himalayas, to Dharamshara, they just advertised that there is Devi Jagar, that your Devi will be awakened. They know there is Devi within them, the Goddess will be awakened. 
and about 3,000 people came from villages, about 20 kilometers away also some of them, walking down to that valley where there was a nice lake also. And they were just joyous and singing that Devi is coming. They were already aware of my coming. And they came, sat down, I gave them a lecture, they closed their eyes with complete reverence, with folded hands. Just anybody who even opened the eyes had such uh, shraddha for Me, as if they saw the Devi herself. For them, no problem. And I was talking to them, I asked any questions, of course, no questions, but the wind that they felt was so strong, and the wind that was going to them was coming back, and there was a ball behind Me, it was hitting the ball, and from the ball it was coming on Me. And I was feeling so very cold, you know, it was not such a cold day, it was a very sunny day. And the Mandapu uh, Kyavate? The tent. Huh? The tent. The tent they had erected was only showing that there was some wind blowing and something is happening there. But the rest of the whole, all the atmosphere, the trees were all silently watching everything. Not a single movement. The birds, everybody was there looking, the monkeys were sitting, the birds were sitting, and all other animals like dogs, things, and all were sitting very nicely. Not a single sound, nobody felt it. So they are conditioned that way with the atmosphere, with all that background they have. And there are seven temples of the Swayambhu Devis, seven temples around of Swayambhus, Vaishnu Devi, Vaina Devi, then uh, this, uh, what you call that, Kangra Devi, they have seven of them, Naina Devi, all of them are around. And this was just in the centre of it. And to them, uh, they started, when they got it, they said, We've got, we've got, we've got, we've got nothing to be told. Now here the conditioning is there. And the, uh, even that there was military and there were jeeps passing when I was coming, they saw Me, they used to salute. And, and the, uh, uh, the gentleman in charge of the command, he came down three times just to see Me. He saw Me off at the station. I mean, all the, as if they, all of them knew and they were singing the song, You, the person who belongs to the, our hills, Pahalo Wali, Chera Wali, the one who is of the tigers, the one who is the daughter of the mountains. The first name of the goddess is Shailaputri, as you know that Shailaputri means the daughter of the mountains. So to them I was just their own, they were waiting for Me, they knew I was to come, I came, they got it. So that's the good conditioning. You are conditioned the other way, never recognize anyone. Even when we were going to Pathankot, the train was late, and at the station, Somebody uh, said that Mataji has come and the train was late for two hours. Everybody, the officers, the coolies, the everybody came to the platform. They started getting Realization. So many got Realization. And this American lady was there sitting, she was feeling very nervous and bad. She was thinking, what is Mother doing? Why is she giving Realization to the coolies? All these things she was thinking stupidly. She wanted to run away. And there were some ladies from Rajasthan, they, they heard that I was there, they all started singing the song of the Goddess at Delhi railway station. So the conditioning here is bad. The part of the conditioning that is bad, first of all, is this way, that the mind is spoiled by wrong identifications. Like uh, uh, some actress, you see, uh, Bardo sort of thing, or uh, Marilyn Monroe sort of thing, you see. Everybody's attention will be on them. Or the, our mind is made like that. You, if you see this way the statues are made, everything is on that line. Or else your mind is spoilt uh, with reading such funny things which are in the market, which you read all these things, you see. So the whole attention is either on sex or on material things. So how can it see something beyond? Now, even supposing you can see beyond these two things, material and this and that, still 
Mamaya is such that she puts your attention on test. But that's the only escape I have. See the point? Now, the escape that I have, I use it uh, not deliberately, I must tell you. It's no deliberations. It is automatically, it works out. And with that, your attention is judged. Now, the best way to do is this way. Why can't I not recognize Mother? I have seen her raising the Kundalini of the people. I think too much of Christ. What? I have not seen Christ, have I? I have never met Him. I don't know whether He was there or not. But I have seen our Mother, and she has given reason. Uh, uh, she has given so much to so many thousands of people, and she has been with us. But the Western mind is such that it will pick on something by which they will not recognize. Say, I'll tell you how. Now, Easter puja we had in London, all right? Now, you must understand that when you give me flowers, you ask for flowers for your life, and you have to give a little money to me if you want to have money also. It's important, not in person, but in the puja. But these people brought lots of sweets for themselves, food for themselves, and for puja they were not left with any money, but on the contrary they said they are running short, as if I have to pay for it. And like Gagangar said that, can you give her tana mana dhana? Tana is your body, mana is your heart, and uh, dhana is all your property. Everything can you give it to Mother? You ask them, just Mother. think of that. And they were quite stunned, Sahaja Yogi's, by such a question. But everything is mine, you must know that. But all the Indian Sahaja Yogi said, yes, we will. Now, so I said that that's wrong. You must collect some money for the puja, I had to tell them. It's very uh, embarrassing. Uh, now, I'm saying the attention, I'm saying the attention you have to see where it is. And you have no idea as to thousands of pounds I've spent myself. But now the people who had arranged, they dropped out of Sahaja Yoga. And all Sahaja Yogini, she dropped out. So this is what is the, the understanding cannot come easily, because your attention is on all these things, then I play tricks on it, because it is not important how many Westerners come and how many Easterners come to God. For Him everybody is a human being. If I am in Maharashtra, say, for five years, most of the Maharashtra will be there. But it is for you people. You have to seek that yourself, saying, why can't I be aware, what's wrong with me, why, is it ego? So, you see, the attention, your attention, I must say, I judge it every moment, because there's a centripetal and a centrifugal force. Now, the other side of it is also, supposing you are too much fond of some people, say, you are Christians, you want Christians to be saved, or you are Muslims, you want Muslims to be saved, or you want particular to be saved, then I give you a lesson through them only, that you learn, no, no more of these. Families, for example. Family, you get so fed up with the families, then you say, <laughs> like, like Gregor gave me his family ring today. <laughs> it's like that. You just don't want anything to do with them. It is, it is that way. So, this is. Then, apart from that, other attentions you have, like your positions, your jobs, your, all these, is too much. The main thing is the moksha. What is it after all? What do you need all this for? And then you find that the idealism that you have also keeps you back. So, like I've seen people when they come to Sahaja Yoga, they think it's a good way of expression of your idealism, uh, your power. You see, the power game also starts with the Western mind, very common. And then also people start seeing it. Uh, sometimes, uh, like some people said that, Mother, uh, I uh, even now feel attached to women, sort of thing, nonsense, and all these things, you see. So, I don't know what to say. That shows the, the deities are very weak. 
they have no strength. That means that, that you are still uh, doing things which you should just give up in no time. The sin against the mother. And on top of that, the conditioning is such that why should mother run my life? I mean, who has got time to run your life, actually? <laughs> you see, so one must know that with all these things, you are not the first. First are those from the dharamshala. So you have to develop that competition with them. How are they surrendered? Why are we not? What are we thinking? Where are we? You see, in this world, those people are re- who are regarded as her top world are the lowest in God's realm. You see, you see in the other direction. <laughs> then you should say, why am I so low grade that I cannot recognize the joy, the source of joy? What is my background? Why, why am I like this? Well, like a worm, still crawling? That's what, it's, you see, that sort of a feeling when you should know that if I am asking you to come and all that, it is not that there is any shop here, nothing is selling. You have to sell your goods. Again, it is Mahamaya, looks as if I am trying to please you. <laughs> you should please me, prasanno bhavet, and then ask a question, why can't I please Mother, what's wrong with me? Like in India or even in Dharamshala, when all the ladies and men came, they must have washed their clothes, you see, all new clothes, whatever it is, they bought all their ornaments, whatever they had, they brought it, and uh, whatever they had pawned also, they must have asked the fellow that the Devi is coming, how can we see her, all properly dressed, combed properly, all nicely dressed, and they all came as if they were going to be a big festival. And uh, uh, they gave me things which, I tell you, of such immense joy, uh, which were, you may say they are not so expensive, but their heart, I mean, they had given me whatever they had sort of things, because I could feel their heart in it. And uh, the whole understanding that we are meeting the God. Like they showed some photographs in Birmingham, and there are two, three girls from India, they just started crying. They said, this is not the way, she's God, and God's photograph, this way to spoil Devata photo. God's photograph, to be spoiled like this, they just couldn't bear it. If a negative person takes the photograph, then uh, the photographs come out very funny, and such photographs were shown two, three, and the, they were very upset. I am that, no doubt. I say that, but also I am Mahamaya. You have seen that in your photographs, your cameras have shown you. You can't see it because you are not so sensitive. Even animals can know, the tigers can know, the serpents can know, the birds can know, the trees can know, why not you? So that's what you have to decide yourself. It is you who has to ask for it, not me. May God bless you.